let's look at brakes tutorial solution so the first question says that for the given band brake the applied load at the end of the lever is given as 300 newton over here and then what happens is the width of the band is given as 50 mm the coefficient of friction is given as 0 0.3 so we have to calculate the band tension that is t1 and t2 then find the braking torque and finally to calculate the maximum lining pressure. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert this to a free body diagram. In the given problem we see that the drum is rotating in the clockwise direction. So let's start solving this problem. So what we do is with the given schematic in the question we have to convert everything into a free body diagram. So the first thing is we need to determine which side is the tight side and which one is the slack side. So in this case the drum is rotating clockwise as such. So if we fix the band at this point and see what is happening then we can decide. So as the drum rotates in the clockwise direction you'll see that this side of the band as the drum rotates clockwise it is pulled. So as soon as the band is pulled it becomes the tight side and naturally the other one becomes your slack side. So now what happens is so I've got my T1 and I've got my T2. The next thing is as to how did I determine that okay T1 and T2 are going to act in this direction. So again going back to our lectures we said that or I said that, that the forces will act away from the point where it is fixed to the lever arm itself. So the band is attached at this point and at this point and the forces will act away from the lever arm and then since the band brake is given over here so the forces are going to act in this direction some of you will say that the force can act in the downward direction but there's no band there's no band extending in this direction so the only possibility is that your t1 and t2 are going to act in this direction next thing is looking at the geometry we can take some of moment about this point o which is over here so then what we do is taking sum of moment about point O, counterclockwise is positive is equals to zero. So this is given over here. So sum of moment about point O is counterclockwise is zero is equals to T2x 100 mm away from O and your applied force Fx 325 mm away from your fulcrum at O. Now you'll see that I haven't converted my distances into meters. I'm using mm as long as you are consistent that all the distances that you're using is mm, your solution will be right. So 100 T2 minus 325F is equals to zero, making T2 the subject of the formula. I get that my tension in the select side is given as 975 Newton. The next thing is I can calculate the rep angle or the lap angle. So when you see at the geometry, you'll see that the lap angle is from here to here so that is the region in which the band is lying or pressing against the drum and that is simply 180 div plus 30 degrees over here so 180 plus 30 which gets me 210 so 210 divided by 180 times my pi I get my lap angle in radians is 3.67 reds now tension ratio is nothing but t1 over t2 is equals to exponential f theta coefficient of friction was given as 0 0.3 uh, lap angle is 3.67 radians so substituting these values and solving you get your tension ratio which is t1 over t2 is equals to 3.01 so therefore t1 is nothing but 3.01 times t2 t2 we had already solved for so therefore your t1 is nothing but 2934.75 newton the next thing that we can do is we have to find our braking torque braking torque is given by this formula Breaking torque is T1 minus T2 times your radius. The radius of the drum is uh, diameter was given as 200, so the radius is 100 mm. So substituting, converting it into SI units over here, you get your torque to be 195.98 Newton meter. The last thing that we had to solve for was the maximum pressure or the maximum lining pressure. So your P max is nothing but T1 over BR. B is the width of the band which was given as 50 mm. So again the radius of the drum was 100 mm converting all of these in SI units. And we find that the break, sorry, the maximum lining pressure is nothing but 586.95 kilo pascal. So once more we do some of moments we for draw a free body diagram to represent the forces accurately we take some of moments find t2 
from t2 we can find t1 we can find t1 using our tension ratio once t1 and t2 are known we can find our breaking torque and finally we can find our maximum lining pressure now let's look at question 2 in question 2 a uh, force of 250 newton is applied at the end of this lever arm the coefficient of friction is given as uh, 0 0.4 uh, the lap angle since due to the nature the lap angle is 180 degrees and we are to find the maximum and minimum force in that band which is basically t1 and t2 when a clockwise torque of 450 newton meter is applied to the drum so in this case it's a clockwise torque and this clockwise torque simply indicates that the drum is also rotating in the clockwise direction because the direction of the rotation of the drum is not specified in this problem but just by looking at this fact that it is rotating in the clockwise direction the drum is also going to rotate in the clockwise direction so again referring to the uh, the methodology that we use this has to be converted to a free body diagram so this problem is now being converted to a free body diagram so again this drum is rotating in a clockwise direction so let's assume that the band is fixed at this point so let's see what is happening to the bands on both of the sides so as the drum rotates in the clockwise direction you'll see that this side of the band as the drum rotates in the clockwise direction it is pulled so this side becomes your t1 and this one becomes your t2 if you look at this side as the drum rotates clockwise you'll see that this band is uh pushed so it becomes your slack side so t1 and t2 again understanding the uh, reasoning the tensions in your band will act away from the place where it is fixed onto the lever arm itself so t1 and t2 are acting in the positive y direction your applied force of 250 newton is acting downwards t1 is 65 mm away from your fulcrum so we're taking moment about point o which is over here and t2 is acting at a distance of 135 mm away from the fulcrum and your applied force is acting at a distance of 260 mm so this problem is solved in a slightly different manner we're not going to use our tension ratio to solve the problem so the reason for doing that is because our braking torque is given which is 450 newton meter since the braking torque is given to us we need to understand that your braking torque is nothing but t1 minus t2 times your radius so this is the first thing that we'll do we know that our braking torque is t1 minus t2 times the radius so your brake breaking torque was given as 450 newton meter into t1 minus t2 the radius of the drum since diameter is 200 mm radius is 100 mm converting it to si units so we said we can solve and obtain that t1 minus t2 is simply 4500 and we can make t1 the subject of the formula so therefore t1 is nothing but 4500 plus t2 now with our free body diagram that we have obtained over here we can take sum of moment about point o counterclockwise is zero so t1 is going to cause a moment in the post in the clockwise direction so negative 65 t1 again i'm using my distances in mm as long as i'm consistent i'm using all the distances in mm the solution that i obtain is going to be again correct so t2 is going to act in the clockwise direction so negative 65 t1 t2 is going to cause a moment in the clockwise direction so positive so plus 135 t2 f is going to cause a moment in the clockwise direction so negative 260 times f and we know that t1 over here is simply 4500 plus t2 so substituting for this over here so minus 65 into 4500 plus t2 plus 135 t2 minus the distance 260 times applied force is 250 newton so once i simplify this i get 72 t2 is equals to 357500 and t1 is simply 5107.14 newton and t1 is simply given by 4500 plus t2 and i get a value of 9607.14 newton so this problem is slightly different compared to question one of this tutorial we cannot use our tension ratio to solve for t1 and t2 is because the braking torque is given to us so in this case the braking torque was given so the only manner in which you can solve this problem is is to start with this definition braking torque is given you can find t1 minus t2 is equals to something 
you do sum of moments sub substitute for this value over here and you can solve for your t1 and t2 so in this essence this problem is slightly different now let's look at the last question for this tutorial it's dealing with uh, uh, a flywheel which has a mass of 100 kg rotating at a speed of 720 revolutions minute uh, the system is brought to rest by applying a brake the mass of the brake is given as 5 kg uh, it is made from it is made from cast iron which has a specific heat value of 460 joules per kg degree celsius we are to assume that all the heat is absorbed by the brake we have to calculate the rise in the temperature so we're looking at rotational kinetic energy because as the drum rotates it rotates about an axis so it is rotation and it's in motion so kinetic energy so therefore rotational kinetic energy so the first thing that we need to do is we need to find our moment of inertia so moment of inertia for a solid disc is given as half mr squared so half mass of the flywheel is given as 100 kg and the radius of generation is given as 350 mm so substituting for these values we get our moment of inertia as 6.125 kg meter squared now what happens is the speed is given as 720 revolutions per minute we have to convert this to angular velocity so omega is 2 pi and upon 60 so 2 pi times 720 divided 60 we get our angular velocity as 75.4 rates per second uh, rotational kinetic energy is simply given as half i omega squared so substituting for your moment of inertia substituting for your uh, angular velocity you obtain that your kinetic energy is nothing but 17.41 kilojoules and this formula is given in our lectures so the amount of energy is simply equal to the mass of the brake times the heat capacity of the material from which the brake is made times the change in the temperature so this q is the amount of energy that is absorbed by the brake while applying the braking action so if we make the change in temperature the subject of the formula we get q is uh, sorry change in temperature is q over mc so q was given a 17.41 kilojoules divided by mass mass of the brake is given as 5 kg so 5 times the heat capacity we simply end up with a value of 7.57 degrees celsius so once the flywheel is brought to rest by applying the brake we observe that the temperature of the brake will increase by 7.57 degrees celsius